What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access. And today, yeah. for Best Albums, joined by Nice and Smooth. <sighs> yes, yes. yes. And uh, Smooth B, in particular, has selected yeah. Machiavelli. Yeah, man. 1996, Woo. Tupac. Oh, my God. So, so Smooth B, for you, yes. what makes this the best album? To me, man, it was just, it was so much. It was so much element to that album. And then it was, it was like as if he was speaking from the afterlife. That's how I received it. You know what I'm saying? And the shit just was crazy. Just what I think made it classic was so many different elements that he put into it, but his passion throughout the entire album. Right. A lot of people, they don't really catch some of the stuff that he was saying. They'll just get caught into the, maybe the energy or whatever, whatever, but the shit he was, dude, hold up. He came on and said, this killed me. Right. I ain't a killer, but don't push me. Right. Revenge is like the sweetest joy next to getting pussy. Right. Excuse me, ladies. <laughs> Picture paragraphs unloaded, wise words being quoted. Yeah. Peep the weakness in this rap game is sold it. That shit is now. Right. Peep the weakness in this rap game, man. He telling you, like, when you think about it, that's how you feel. Nigga, I ain't a killer. But don't push me. Right, right. Revenge is like the sweetest joy. Let me get put uh, Okay. So, that, me and my girlfriend. Right. He's talking about a gun. So, that was a... Uh... He's talking about guns. It's me and my girlfriend. Right, right. <laughs> he romanticized a handgun. Mm -hmm. Who does that? I love finger fucking you. What? Right. Man, Pac a beast, man. Right. Yeah. So Machiavelli, obviously, with uh, All Eyes on Me and then uh, Me Against the World, those three albums right in a row. Right. He really had a lot of, uh, as he had throughout his career up to that point, he had a lot of uh, introspective material. Right. But. He also was known a lot more at that era when Machiavelli was coming out because of Death Row and all this stuff for being so wild and right. out of control and everything. So why do you think that with me and my girlfriend, with Hail Mary, that people kind of got away from the artistry that Tupac had and like kind of the storytelling or the cleverness he had with the, the way he wove in the met similes and metaphors? Why do you think they got away from that with Machiavelli? I think it was shock, man. It was so many elements. The dude died, B. Right. So it's like motherfuckers were scared to listen to that fucking album. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Right. No way! You know? Yeah. But the artistry was insane. You know what I'm saying? When you go into it, like, whoa, then I start seeing everybody trying to be Bach after that. Absolutely. To the point where motherfuckers did, we knew him, that's our brother. Right. To the point where it was people that he didn't even fuck with and made it known they sampling this shit. Well. Uh, <laughs> Get eaten. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't have been about that if he was walking around. Right, right. You know, but I'm saying this is like. Well, even on that album, look, he dissed a lot of people that sampled him. They all sampled him. Specifically. Here's the kicker. My name. Here's My the name. kicker. <laughs> Here's the kicker, right? You know. Right. <laughs> look, man. But, but, but. My brother, I love him. Now look, here's the kicker though. Because you made me think about something. To me, you made me sum this shit up. To me, Machiavelli was the Tupac, like Into the Dragon was to Bruce Lee. Okay. You understand oh, what I'm wow. talking about? Oh, that's the, Facts. That's yeah, but uh, speak on it for the people that aren't familiar okay, with the movie. Okay, let me explain that, something to that, you. Yeah, that yeah. was crazy right there. When you take all eyes on me, you take against or uh, me against the world. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's an evolution happening, just right. like from fucking Fist of Fury, the okay. Chinese connection. Right. Right. I got you. By the time that into the dragon, Bruce was on some other shit. Right. He didn't even look the same. He was cut up so crazy. You know, he Bruce was always a bad motherfucker, but you could look at him and say he's on another level. Right. Watch all his movies, it was always that dude. I watch them from Kato, motherfucker. I, I collect that kind of shit. <laughs> Into the Dragon, that motherfucker's an extraterrestrial. You like, look at Bruce go, right? Same with Pop. He was in his zone. Whatever was driving him, whatever, whatever, whatever. We know the variations. We know different Tupacs than the average person. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't like, we ain't jump on a Tupac wagon after he passed away. We was with him. Yeah. 
Working on One Nation, among Come other, on! among other things. So, so that thing, you know, it, it hits you differently. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But that's the best way I can make that equation. Mm-hmm. Cause when I got into this, I said, my dude is on one on this one here. He's really on one, and, and then, he knew what his destiny was. To live and die in L.A. But, Come on, man. But with that record, um, the thing that I thought was interesting about it too is him, you know, born in New York growing up in Baltimore, living in uh, Northern California, and then coming to LA. So for you guys, at that point, you guys had traveled so much and toured and, and living here and different things. Yeah. So what to you was special about to live and die in LA is artistically? <laughs> Yo, he talked about a perspective that nobody else ever talked about, about LA. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he gave you a, go ahead. That's pop. Right on time. Thank you. I right, pop. Now look here. Here's what I'm saying. <laughs> when he said to live and die in L.A., man, it was like he totally embraced L.A. Mm-hmm. And he gave everybody that never been there another way of looking at L.A. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm talking about? And he was he was showing, quote unquote, black and brown unity on that. Right. You understand what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Like saying, nah, we all rock. Yeah. Even though he was trying to make that a reality, it's just like when he said, one we day. ain't ready to have a black president. Right. Remember? Yeah. All right. But then we had one. Yeah. Yeah. Pathetic. So he talked about where he wanted the black-brown relationship to be back in 96 mm-hmm. in certain places. I've been out here now. I live here. So I've been here for the last 12 years. So I see a lot of different changes of California, even from the California I knew way back. It's different. But I'm just like Obama was like, there's just some other shit. It's a fact. Just like Obama was, I see his shit playing out from his song. Like he's talking about that unity to live and die in LA, but I see everybody trying to come together. Cause I'm here and I'm seeing it. I'm like, wow, this is crazy, dude. So, you know, that, that record, man, it's just like, Listening to any other, because I've had a chance to be out here and I listen to everybody, I listen to all types of music and shit. But I, every once in a while I throw my motherfucking headphones on and I turn on some Dre out here and smoke some shit. Right. I be like, oh, that's what made him do it. Yeah. <laughs> the atmosphere. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, I understand why this mother, it's like the music fits with the atmosphere. Yeah. I love y'all, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, Toss It Up is very incongruous on yeah. the record, which I always thought when I was first listening to it and that song would come on, it just seemed so out of place. Mm-hmm. So for you guys, like, what did you think when you were hearing that, that record on there? I loved it because it was with Jodeci. Mm-hmm. And that's our boys. That's all family. So it's like when, <laughs> it's like when, uh, I like a pop new guru. Right. I'll give you a case in point. So when he heard Dwick, I know Pac went ham. Right. I know he went crazy. I never saw him react to Dwick, but I know that bugged him out. Cause right. he know us, he know who. Then he's like, my dudes! Like he could, he would know what it took for that to come out. He was like, oh, they own one. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's well, like- Well, he used to step in the arena beat for I Get Around, or a sample, same thing. You feel what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's the energy. And, and listen, I remember the first time he did Keep Your Head Up. Right. He played it for me. He was out here. I was like, oh shit. I like that, dude. Mm-hmm. He said, yo, man, I had to go get the background singers, man. You know, the way y'all be singing on that joint. I said, I love that shit. So I got to get some background. I was like, well, he said, that's why I, he said, that's why I played it for you. I'm glad you liked it. I was like, that shit is fun. That head up is fire. But the inspiration, and it's knowing that it's not biting. You know, look, man, we didn't fucking create the wheel. Right. We rode on it, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Right. So, so it's not, when it's creative, everybody respects it. And, that, and that's like a hidden code amongst artists. Real artists, real artists say real recognize real. Right. So if we real with it, and other people know integrity, they know character. So they be like, I don't mind you list, using my shit because you ain't using my shit. You enhancing my shit. Right. That's like Prince. Peace and blessings be upon him. Right. He gave us clearance. <laughs> Back then he wasn't fucking with nobody. No. Starfish and coffee. 
Yeah. Sky's the limit. I want to be your lover. He gave it up. Right. Very rare. I said, I love <laughs> this dude, B. Right. We sat down, man. Oh, I'm making Sky's the limit. And we did it from the essence. We channeled. We, just, we fucking with Prince on Vibration, man. We knew what to, you know, we just did us. Because plus we loved the song. Mm -hmm. But from the label perspective, we're like, I don't know if you're going to get that shit clear, but we're going to try. You know what I'm saying? But then <clears throat> to hear Prince love that shit. Uh, motherfucking, uh, what's my man? Uh, Russell, motherfucker said that shit to me. Hey, yo, 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 nigga. <laughs> Prince love that shit. I was like, huh? He said, yeah, I played this shit. <laughs> he cleared the shit. Yeah, y'all good. I was like, what? Wish I could have been there. You know what I mean? Purple Highness. With his purple shit on. Yes, Listening yes. to that joint. So as far as uh, Machiavelli, Tupac, Don Cluminati, what makes it a best album? Like, look, what is the legacy that makes it a best album looking at it today? Oh, man. I just think it was a classic. Just to, to me personally, I just think that it was the way that everything went. You know what I'm saying? Even into that untimely situation. You know, it's, it's just, it would be something some of a though different. Mm -hmm. It's the same type of thing with motherfucking, um, so many artists. Like, like, uh, what's our girl name? Amy Winehouse. Like Amy, yeah. Like Biggie. They last work, they left the world with something that they could just hold on to, man. And it's some of their best work. So that in and of itself make you go, wow, that's above his shit right there. You know? So I think that's just, you know. Plus, I just was thinking about my dude today, man. It felt like he was up in here with a bottle of Henny. So. Well, there it is, y'all. Best albums, nice and smooth. Yes. Machiavelli, Don Cluminati. Yeah. Soren Baker, Unique Access. Yeah.